Let's now explore some general aspects of what's called Serum Louisville theory. So, in a previous video, we've explored a number of different functions, um, namely different special functions defined through some differential equation that are complete and orthogonal. So, for example, the simplest set of functions are sine and cosine functions, namely sine of omega x and cosine of omega x. And these are solutions of the differential equation y double prime plus omega squared y equal to zero. There's also Legendre polynomials. They have this feature of completeness and orthogonality, p sub l. And these are solutions of the differential equation 1 minus x squared, y double prime, minus 2xy prime, plus l, l plus 1 times y equal to 0. To just name a few of the others, we talked a little bit about Hermite polynomials, which are solutions uh, hn to the differential equation y double prime minus 2xy prime plus 2ny equal to 0, and also Bessel functions, which show up in a variety of contexts. Uh, and we're just going to stick with the j sub p Bessel functions, the first kind, and their solutions of the differential equations x squared y double prime plus xy prime plus x squared minus p squared y equal to 0. And etc. There's lots of these different types of special functions that one can write down, which are solutions to some special differential equation that someone liked. Um, and it turns out that these are all some special cases of some more general differential equation and some more general structure. And so the more general structure is called, indeed, Sturm Louisville theory. And so uh, let's state what is going on here. So let's let y of x be some solution to some differential equation, some general differential equation. Uh, and so the differential equation here is d by dx, p of x, dy dx, plus w of x, y of x, plus lambda times r of x times y of x equal to zero, where p, w, and r are all some functions. And this is true in the region uh, x between a and b. And we'll also impose some boundary conditions on our solution, y of x. And the boundary conditions are that at the first boundary, x equal to a, some combination of the function and its first derivative must vanish. And at the other boundary, some combination, some other combination of the function and its first derivative should vanish. So this is some general problem, um, some general differential equation. But it turns out that there is uh, a set of solutions to this type of differential equation in general. Uh, and a set of solutions we'll call y sub lambda of x. And these set of solutions are called eigenfunctions. And of course, this, these eigenfunctions have a subscript lambda. So they depend on the value lambda in the differential equation. Uh, and we call these lambdas, the set of these lambdas, eigenvalues. OK, so this set of functions, y sub lambda, these eigenfunctions, um, have some really nice set of properties. And so the Serum Louisville theory says that this set of functions, y sub lambda, are in fact both complete, namely, you can expand any function in the region between a and b as a sum a sub n y sub n of x over these eigenfunctions. And in addition, these eigenfunctions are also orthogonal. Namely, if you integrate from a to b of r of x times y sub n y sub m dx, you get 0 if n is not equal to m. Now, this r sub x here is actually the same r sub x, or sorry, r of x, the same function from the differential equation that showed up here. So it turns out it has some special connection with the differential equation up there. Okay, so this is what Sturm-Louisville theory says. So let's look at an example 
Um, so the simplest Sturm Louisville theory problem you can imagine is well, let's let a lot of these functions, unknown functions, be equal to uh, just one. So let's let p of x equal to one and r of x equal to one in the region between zero and l. And let's just impose the boundary conditions that the function is zero at both zero and l. So then we have the known differential equation, a nice looking differential equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x plus lambda times y of x is equal to zero. Again, I'll just state the other conditions. This is true in the region between zero and L um, with the boundary conditions that the function itself vanishes at zero and L. So Sturm-Louisville theory says that there is a set of functions called eigenfunctions, uh, which are solutions to this differential equation. And indeed there are. Y sub n of x are the function sine of n pi x over L. We call these the eigenfunctions. And the lambdas are n pi over L squared. We call these the eigenvalues. Um, notice this use of eigenfunctions and eigenvalues sounds a lot like quantum mechanics. And indeed, this is pretty much identical to the quantum mechanical particle in a box, where these are indeed the eigenfunctions and essentially the eigenvalues for the particle in the box. Um, so there's some nice connection between Sturm-Louisville theory and quantum mechanics. So these eigenfunctions, uh, the y sub m, are indeed orthogonal, as we know. So namely, if you take the product of two sine functions with n pi x over l and m pi x over l, integrate that between 0 and l, you get 0 if n is not equal to m. And we also know by Fourier series decomposition that you can write any function in this region as the sum over these sine functions, n pi x over l. That's just the usual Fourier series. So it turns out then that the sines and cosines in the Fourier series are a special case of the more general um, Sturm-Louisville theory. Well, that's true for, in fact, the Legendre polynomials, the Hermite polynomials, the Bessel functions. All of these are just special functions, special cases of uh, Sturm-Louisville theory. Um, and they're all eigenfunctions of a Sturm-Louisville problem. Well, it turns out that there are many, many more as well. Um, any differential equation that you can imagine writing down would give you um, any other type of eigenfunction. And so this is a more general theory that encompasses a lot of differential equations.